To many, Nikola Tesla was a genius, unappreciated in his own time. Born in the Austrian Empire in 1856, the Serbian-American inventor was arguably one of the most brilliant minds of his day, and yet Tesla never reached the level of fame and acclaim that he perhaps deserved. For those of you who are unfamiliar with his work, Nikola Tesla was a mechanical and electrical engineer best known for his contributions to the designs for what would become the modern alternating current electricity supply system, or AC. It was Tesla's hope that he could patent and sell his inventions, that the creations and advancements he made would help to improve the lives of everyday people. Unfortunately, due to the ruthless and callous business practices of his rival, Thomas Edison, much of Nikola Tesla's work faded into obscurity after his death in 1943. However, what if one of his inventions was not only a success, but proved so deadly in its intended function that it had to be contained? And who better to keep something like that secure than the experts in anomalous entities, objects, and technology? The SCP Foundation Meet the Teleforce, one of the surviving inventions of Nikola Tesla's legacy, better known to our friends at the Foundation as SCP-2700. While most information about various anomalies is kept secret by the Foundation through the use of memory-altering drugs called amnestics, SCP-2700 may be one of the few anomalies that the public is aware of. Or at least, they might be aware of the proposed concept of the Teleforce. Tesla himself described the invention as a type of weapon that would fire pellets or rounds of material. However, rather than acting like a conventional firearm, the Teleforce would launch these projectiles at high velocity from inside a vacuum chamber, using electrostatic repulsion to fire these rounds at the intended target. This probably sounded like a weapon pulled straight from early works of science fiction, but Nikola Tesla claimed that it was an idea that came to him after he studied the Van de Graaff generator. It was Tesla's hope that his Teleforce could be used as a defensive weapon that could either be deployed against enemy infantry on ground level, or even be fired at aircraft with enough power to bring them down. However, word of this invention soon got out to the public. In 1934, a number of New York newspapers referred to the Teleforce using the fear-mongering descriptions of a death ray. Whether this was just a misunderstanding or done to incite mistrust in Tesla and his work, it forced the inventor to address the matter publicly, saying, This invention of mine does not contemplate the use of any so-called death rays. Rays are not applicable because they cannot be produced in requisite quantities and diminish rapidly in intensity with distance. All the energy of New York City transferred into rays and projected 20 miles could not kill a human being, because according to a well-known law of physics, it would disperse to such an extent as to be ineffectual. My apparatus projects particles. As for the device itself, while the SCP Foundation was able to uncover a seemingly perfected version of the Teleforce in 1946, three years after Nikola Tesla's death, found in an abandoned research facility believed to have been used by Tesla himself, SCP-2700 seemed to be the weapon that the Serbian inventor had described. It was only when the SCP Foundation began to take a closer look at the device that their researchers realized something. SCP-2700 could be even more dangerous than Tesla had intended the Teleforce to be in his original designs for the weapon. The device itself is made from three main components. First is the interface, designated SCP-2700-1. This is a metal console, complete with a QWERTY keyboard and a display screen along with a number of buttons, switches, dials, and levers, each responsible for controlling a key aspect of SCP-2700. 2700-1 features a command-based operating system, with any command typed on the keyboard appearing on screen in green block text. The Foundation is still baffled as to how an engineer like Tesla, even one as gifted as he, was able to create an operating system like this with the limitations of technology during the early 1940s. A network of conductive copper wiring then connects the SCP-2700-1 control console to the other two components of SCP-2700, appropriately known as SCP-2700-2 and SCP-2700-3. Foundation researchers tasked with examining and understanding the Teleforce believe the SCP-2700-2 part of the device to be a particle accelerator, 
Now it's hard to go into exactly how particle accelerators work in this video, but we'll do our best to keep it short and simple. Like the name suggests, a particle accelerator's job is to increase the speed of subatomic particles like protons or electrons. Basically, particle accelerators create a beam of these particles that have been charged to hold extremely high amounts of energy. And these charged particle beams are often useful for a number of different scientific research methods. That's what the big particle accelerator up at CERN is used for. This one, SCP-2700-2 on the other hand is… well, it's not for research per se. It's held securely in a lead-lined tungsten chamber in the shape of a cylinder although it contains all the parts you'd expect to find in a modern-day particle accelerator. SCP-2700-2 is a lot smaller, at just 7.35 meters long. Then we get to SCP-2700-3, the core of the Teleforce. Also composed of lead-lined tungsten, it is a spherical frame with an apparatus inside, visible through a silica glass porthole on one side. Within this outer sphere is another smaller sphere frame that was built using an unidentified material. According to notes that the Foundation has recovered, Tesla himself wrote that this space inside the sphere is held in a perpetual vacuum state. But what is perhaps most interesting and concerning about SCP-2700-3 isn't the metal frame itself, but rather what is held inside of it. Glowing at the center is the fourth and final component of Teleforce, known only as SCP-2700 Omega. This, as far as the best minds of the SCP Foundation can tell, is the power source of the weapon. It is an anomaly in and of itself, a phenomenon of energy that does not behave within the normal laws of physics. Specifically, SCP-2700 Omega directly contradicts what is known as entropy. Due to these abnormal properties, the space within SCP-2700-3 containing SCP-2700 Omega does not obey standard rules of time. The flow of time within the power source's chamber seems to be reversed somehow. However, researchers have noted that the frame and inner sphere of SCP-2700-3 that surround SCP-2700 Omega seem to be unaffected by these anomalous effects. It is because of this power source that SCP-2700 is even more dangerous than Nikola Tesla would have ever intended. Never mind the fact that the Teleforce weapon was designed to fire supercharged high-velocity rounds at a target, the sole component powering it could prove to be devastatingly destructive itself if it ever broke out from within its frame. According to predictions and calculations made by the SCP Foundation's top scientific researchers, if SCP-2700 Omega was ever to be released or accidentally break free from the SCP-2700-3 apparatus that contains it, then the result would be catastrophic. The power source's anomalous properties, resisting the laws of physics and time themselves, would cause a massive chain reaction. The rest of the universe would be converted to the same inverted state of entropy that SCP-2700 Omega exists in, which would ultimately lead to a YK-class entropic annihilation event. The whole universe as we know it would be pulled inwards, creating an infinitely energetic singularity. In short, it would be the Big Bang, but in reverse, with all of creation pulled inside out. The worst part of all of this? According to the readouts on SCP-2700-1's display monitor, the Teleforce has been armed. Counting down, the weapon is scheduled to activate in the year 2234, exactly 300 years after being armed, most likely by Tesla himself. If the device was to ever fully activate, SCP-2700 Omega would be breached, and the entire universe could be unraveled and sucked into a singularity. The only hope the SCP Foundation has of preventing this destruction is to destroy or contain SCP-2700 within another SCP. The O5 Council are still searching for a suitable candidate should the worst come to pass. For now, personnel have been instructed to avoid tampering with the Teleforce in any way, shape, or form. Should SCP-2700 Omega show any change in its behavior, then let's just hope that the Overseer Council is able to produce an anomaly capable of neutralizing it. But there's still one other big question that needs answering. Namely, how on earth did Nikola Tesla, a scientist limited by the technology of his time, create a power source like SCP-2700 Omega? Something with the capability to unravel the entire universe if it ever breached its containment. 
while the man himself may have given us the answers. The SCP Archives file on SCP-2700 concludes with an extract of a log that Nikola Tesla kept during the last decade of his life. As we mentioned before, Tesla was not exactly a success in his own time. He chose to keep trying to produce his inventions despite driving himself towards financial ruin. He was the Vincent van Gogh of science. Depression took a hold of the inventor in his later years, until one day he was approached by a mysterious figure. This man, as it turns out, was a traveler from another universe, and brought Tesla with him to this alternate reality. In his logbook, Nikola lamented over how discontent he was with his life in our universe, and how transcendentally beautiful it was in this new one. While there, Tesla worked with a group of fellow scientists, all brought to that universe by the same traveler, with the goal of creating a source of perpetual energy. This power source was intended to break the known laws of thermodynamics, and it seemed that SCP-2700 Omega itself was the outcome of these scientific minds coming together. By combining two substances from two universes with completely different laws of physics to our own, Tesla and the others created the power source they had dreamed of. But things quickly started to go wrong. Tesla realized that the core, later known as SCP-2700 Omega, was somehow moving backwards in time. As he tried to correct it, he realized the device had been locked, and that someone had armed it. Why? The Traveler revealed that this was his plan all along, to create something capable of destroying this universe. It turned out the alternate universe he had brought Tesla to was not the Traveler's home, Rather, a different place he wished to destroy with the singularity that SCP-2700 Omega would cause. The Traveler vanished to his true home, leaving Nikola Tesla alone with SCP-2700. Saddened to think his invention would destroy this new universe, which he found to be profoundly beautiful, he made a truly unexpected decision. He returned home, and in his sadness, thought it would be better if the device he'd helped create brought about the end of our universe. SCP-2700 is now a ticking time bomb, destined to wipe out our entire reality unless the device can be disarmed or otherwise neutralized. All this set in motion by a scientist long dead, who submitted all of us as an unwilling sacrifice for a universe we'd never know. Or perhaps this was done as an act of revenge for his own lack of success and appreciation in life. One final act to make sure that if he wasn't remembered, no one else would be either. Or maybe, just maybe, Tesla saw past the slights. Maybe he had so much faith in humanity that he trusted we would one day be able to figure out how to stop SCP-2700 Omega and both universes in the process. No matter his reasoning, all we can do now is place our hope in the SCP Foundation's top minds to find a solution. But the clock is ticking. Now go check out SCP-1461 House of the Worm and SCP-1765 Sisters for terrifying tales of anomalous science gone wrong.